So here's what we're going to do is now we're just going to start playing and here's what I'm going to do. And as I go through this and we go to different websites, what I really want you to do is bookmark those. These are all your personal computers, right? Create a folder or some say bioinformatics stuff, right? Be, be sure to record these or basically, basically bookmark these where we go because what you'll be able to do is go back to these sites. I can only kind of introduce them to you. I can't, you know, each one has its own different things, it takes a lot of, you know, time and energy to kind of really dig into it. What I want to do is introduce you to all these different sites where you can get information. And then eventually, if you think that this is worthwhile, you can go back and actually look at them yourself. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Well, here's what we're going to do is who here has heard of TCGA? No one's heard of the Cancer Genome Atlas? There you go. So here's what I want you to do is I want you in, in your web browser, I want you to go TGCA and then go portal. So you should see GDC data portal. Click on that. I'm going to start off by telling you, even though that this website, everybody in cancer biology refers to it like it's the, you know, freaking holy doctrine. I think it's crap. <laughs> I think this is a really poor way for our, you know, NIH to actually put data and make it accessible to everybody else. And this is my own personal theory is I think there's a lot of cancer biologists and people out there that don't want you to see their data, right? Everybody, that's their advantage is if they can make the big study, you know, and they only have access to that data, then, you know, like they have an advantage and I think it's crap and I don't think good science gets done that way. Like I've told you, the amount of pixels that you can produce are incredibly small compared to all the pixels that are out there. And if you look here on our right, you can see some of the studies in here. Like look at lung cancer. You've got 12,266 cases of lung cancer that are documented in here. With all that, remember that slide I had about the genomics and epigenetics? That's what it was, epigenetics. That's the structure DNA. You know, you have all that information in here that you can get to. Again, too, though, is like, you know, when you're looking at data that we've been collecting over, you know, decades, you know, is 12,000 cases of lung cancer very much? Not in retrospect, this should be way, way higher. But again, though, this is way more than you could ever, ever generate. Right? So this is a good, good place to kind of start. Okay. So here's what we can do is, so let's play around with this. Uh, everybody bookmark this so that you can go back and curse it later. <laughs> like, so you can show your PI when he goes, I want you to go in TCGA and pull out blah, blah, blah. You can go, Hey, here's the data set, you know, or here, here's, here's the website. And then you can tell them, by the way, I have another website that's going to work way better. So, but we're, I'm going to introduce this website to you first. All right. So let's go in here <coughs> and let's look at exploration. So click on that purple dot thing. So what this allows you to do and what I could do is I could get so granular, I could find certain cases where say, I want say breast cancer, I want say triple negative, and I want a particular mutation in these individuals. And I can go into this database and find those exact samples. Okay. Pulling it out is a whole different matter. <laughs> it is horrible. Um, if you have a chance, I think the best way to pull it out, I don't know, has anybody heard of Array Express? It's a European version. 
Here's what's gonna happen is you're gonna find these websites. If it's European, it's probably gonna be really easy to use and valuable and you're gonna like it. <laughs> Ours, you know, and when you go to their websites, it's like, hello, you know, welcome to my website. Here you go to TCGA, it's like, what do you want? <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> So here's what we can do is let's just, just kind of take a look here. So here on my left, you can see this first tab cases. Everybody see that? So here's what we're going to do is let's go down here. We can go here are all the types of cancer they have. And even in these different kinds of cancers, there's, there's definitely like other things you can look at as well, right? So let's go to, I don't know, let's go to breast cancer. Or, I don't know. What do you guys want to look at? Give me a cancer. How about glioblastoma? Where's the glioblastoma? You see it? Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Um, all right, let's go to brain. What the heck? Or breast cancer. Let's go breast cancer. So click on breast cancer. Okay. As you do that, your primary sites, project, disease types, they all change a little bit. We can also now go to the genes itself. Right? In breast cancer, what's the most mutated gene? Because your PI is probably going to ask you that. Right, it's always a good idea to, to be able to say that. What's the most uh, mutated gene in, in breast cancer? P53. Yep, P53, tumor protein 53. Yes, correct. Definitely more, and, and what you'll find is if you looked at, if I took that thing off, right, the breast cancer and I, I didn't click it, P53 is still the most this, again, this is the biggest cop in your cell, and it makes sense, is that usually when I mutate a gene, I don't make it better. I destroy its function somehow. It's kind of like if I've got a car, and I, it's like me taking a shotgun trying to make the car work better by me shooting it. Maybe one time out of a thousand, maybe I shoot it just in the right area that it actually makes it perform better. But most of the time it's gonna damage your car. And that's usually, when you're looking at genes that are getting mutated, most of the time, or a lot of those times, they are usually tumor suppressors. Here's what I also wanna point out. What's the second most mutated gene in, uh, in cancers? MUC16. Right, let's take a look at, so first off, let's click on this. So we've got P53 here. It's down here, you can see it. This is just giving you, here's the affected cases, here's total cases, 34% of all cases, and then this is across all cancers. Right, you can see loss, gain, definitely way more loss than there is gain. When you see that, when you see that you most of the time, lose that gene rather than gain it, that's gonna tell you it's probably a tumor suppressor. If you see the opposite, then you might say, yeah, that's probably a oncogene. And usually with oncogenes, what you do, is you don't necessarily see a lot of mutations. What you see is you actually copy the gene. You see multiple copies of the gene is what happens. So let's click on P53. This is just giving you a summary. You, these links are really cool. You can basically go in here and learn more about the gene. Uh, online Mendelian Inheritance in Man will give you kind of a synopsis on like some disease states that are associated with it. You've got Ensemble, uh, Unipro, which is more of the protein, express protein kind of information. But we can go down here, we can look across projects, we can see the different types of mutations. This will tell you like the percentage of mutations that are occurring. So you can see like, you know, this mutation very high in ovary cancer probably means something. But again, you can kind of see here, here's the gene itself. And you, what you do is you end up seeing kind of hot spots, right? 
You'll see mutations where, you know, they seem to concentrate on certain parts. And usually that will tell you where the active sites are, right? You don't see just this line here. This is kind of the frequency of mutations, but I would bet that there is an active site. Maybe it's binding a repressor or it's binding something to this site. Maybe it gets phosphorylated. Same thing here. And again, you can go through here. You can see what those different mutations are. You can see, you know, what is the impact? This is benign. This is probably damaging. And you can kind of get an idea of, of the, the type of, of functional changes that those mutations might make. All right, let's go back. So what I want you to do is hit your back button. Now let's look at MUC16. Again, second most mutated gene in cancers. Here's what it does. Kind of a cell surface thing. You're looking at it going, hey, not much of a criminal history here. Here is what should get your attention. <coughs> Look at that gene. What do you notice about MUC16? What stands out to you when you look at this? Why is it getting mutated so much? What do you think? Look at the size of mute 16. How big is it? It's monstrous. <laughs> it's like one of the biggest genes in the body, in humans. So what does that tell you? Do you think it's getting mutated because it's critical in all these cancers? No. What do you think is the reason? It's huge, right? It's like a large area. Here's what happens in a lot of these cancers, especially like breast cancer or lung cancer, is typically what happens is you, in order for those mutations to stay, you got to get rid of like DNA repair. And so what happens is in these cancers, in a lot of different cancers, DNA repair gets sabotaged and therefore, all mistakes kind of get amplified, and so they just kind of stay there. So genes that are very, very large are gonna have a ton of mutations, not because they're being targeted, it's just that your mutation rate has gone up and they get preferentially affected. Does that make sense? I have spent, I have seen people spend half their career going after a gene, and then here's what happens, is they'll come to me and like, hey, I'm really, really this gene just gets mutated and all these cancers has got to be important. And then I go to them and I go, did you notice the size of your gene? <laughs> and they go, no. And you go, it's massive. That's why it's getting mutated. It's probably not having to do with like a huge functional problem. It's, it's probably because, you know, it's just big. And as if you look here on this, you know, on the mutation frame, you know, there, there seems to be maybe a little more mutations here, but for the most you know, it's kind of an even distribution of mutations. So that should tell you that, hey, you know, maybe this is just an innocent bystander that just got caught up in a drive-by, right? Totally. Okay, let's go back. But again, you can, you know, you can look at some of these things like, I don't know, let's, let's look at uh, KRAS. So if we go down here, TPM, MUC16, let's go to KRAS. And let's look at their mutation pattern. A little different now, isn't it? Right? Now we can start seeing these big, like, sites of mutation, right? You're probably going to mutate it right at the beginning of the gene. If you, I want to, you know, affect its function, right? There's, this is probably a binding site. And what this is allowing you to do is see probably the active sites that you should pay attention to. What happens is if a mutation doesn't affect, like if it doesn't make a cancer, you're probably not going to see it. So what we're seeing, we're not seeing all mutations. What we're doing is we're seeing mutations that actually affect the cancer. Right? Does that make sense? 
Not all mutations are equal. Trust me, I've got lots of mutations in my body, all the stuff I've done. <laughs> but, you know, none of them are in a spot where, you know, at least for now, are not causing cancer. Thank you, P53. Okay. Okay, go back. We can also go on any of these ones and look at survival, and that also might tell you whether that has an effect. So look at, so we have the KRAS here. Let's go to KRAS. Let's go all the way to the right and look at survivability. Click. Is yours coming up? Oh, there it is. Duh. Yep, you're right. So now we can see survivability with people with mutations in this gene. In all cancers. And I could basically go in here, I could say, I just want to look at maybe lung cancer. Click on that. And then it changes. I think TCGA, here's what will happen is somebody will say, hey, find out how many mutations or what the frequency of this particular mutation is in this kind of cancer. This is a great place to do it. Anything else? I don't know. I, I haven't. I really haven't, you can go to this analysis part, which is on the top here. You know, you can do Venn diagrams, you can select lists, but for the most part, I think that it's kind of useless, in my opinion. Not a very good place to go get data. All right. Any questions on TCGA? You now know where it is. You've had a brief introduction to it so that when your PI makes the mistake of wanting you to go in here and pull out valuable information, you can tell them, hey, I've, I've gone through it. Here's the information you're asking for. Anything else other than that, this is pretty much useless. Okay. So here is where we are going to go is what I want you to do is in your URL type R2 genomics. <laughs> 